California agriculture is not unique in depending on snowpack. Every major river in Asia, including the Indus, Ganges, Mekong, Yangtze, and Yellow, flows out of the Himalaya Mountains. The Yellow River provides water for China's wheat crop, the largest in the world. The Yangtze River supplies China's rice crop, also the world's largest. The Indus and Ganges both contribute to India's wheat crop, second only to China's. And the Mekong irrigates the rice crop of Vietnam, the world's third largest exporter. Altogether, these agricultural areas feed half of the human population. Both the extent and timing of water flow in these rivers varies with the snowpack in the Himalayas. Global warming will diminish the quantity of water stored in the snowpack of mountain ranges at mid-latitudes, such as the Sierra Nevadas and Himalayas. In such ranges, most of the precipitation falls at mid-elevations when moist air blown in from the ocean rises and cools as it approaches the mountains. Cooler air has a lower capacity to hold water vapor, and any excess water precipitates. If this precipitation falls as snow, the resulting snowpack provides convenient storage until it melts during the warmer, drier seasons. If this precipitation falls as rain, this runoff may engorge rivers, overflow reservoirs, and be discharged directly back to the oceans. Warmer climates will shift snow line to higher altitudes and thereby decrease snowpack and increase rainfall. In many parts of Asia, water from local precipitation and snowmelt in the Himalayas no longer meet the demands of irrigated agriculture. To meet this water deficit, farmers are pumping groundwater from wells as deep as a thousand meters. Not only are energy costs for pumping from such depths becoming prohibitive, but deep wells tap ancient aquifers that are likely to be depleted in the near future because they are only replenished at a glacial pace. In China, acreage of irrigated farmland has peaked for lack of water, and grain production has leveled off or even declined. China, however, has experienced steady population growth during its rapid economic expansion of the past decade. China receives only 5% of the world's total precipitation, but is home to 21% of the human population. To meet its food needs, China now imports grain and other agricultural commodities. In December 2006, the Chinese Ministry of Science and Technology released its first national assessment of climate change. It predicts that average precipitation in China will increase 2-3% to by 2020 and 5-7% to by 2050. Such increases are unlikely to alleviate water shortages in many areas because warmer temperatures, 1.3 to 2.1 degrees Celsius by 2020 and 2.3 and 3.3 degrees Celsius by 2050, will cause greater evaporation. During the second half of the century, water stress will inhibit production of major crops such as rice, maize, and wheat by as much as 37%. The assessment concludes that climate change poses a threat to China's food security. The common saying, blood is thicker than water, is also true in terms of physical chemistry. What flows through our veins are red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, and plasma, all of which contain complex solutions of biochemical salts and inorganic salts. When blood is exposed to pure water, the concentration of water inside the blood cells is less than outside because the water inside is diluted with biochemical salts and inorganic salts. This concentration gradient drives water into cells until they burst. Conversely, in a more saline medium, such as seawater, water outside the blood cells is less concentrated than inside and this concentration gradient for water expels it from the cells until they collapse. Blood cells have an elaborate system of pumps, channels, and carriers that compensates for moderate salt imbalances. Yet the salt composition of plasma and fluids delivered intravenously must remain within strict tolerances to avoid damage. 